My name is Agnes Mo and this is Voices. Um, it was pretty normal, actually, for me. I think it's just the way my family raised me, you know. Um, both of them are former national athletes, so they are not about the hive, they're not about the fame, they're not about that, you know, they're all about accomplishment and, you know, um, your art, your craft. And I think that's, um, that's better because I never grew up thinking that I'm the shit. You know what I mean? I'm just, I just know that, okay, I have something and I have to, you know, put in the work. I have to put in my effort into, you know, making it bigger, polish myself, invest in me. But I never grew up in an environment telling me that, oh, you're, you know, you're it. You're like amazing. You're this, you're that, you know. The struggle being a child star is that um, I don't have the privilege of first impression since a very, you know, at a very early age. Um, everybody kind of already expect you to be a certain way or they think that you are, you know, this girl on TV. And of course, like we all know what or who we are on stage and who we are off stage, um, a lot of times, you know, are completely different. So, you, you know, I didn't have that privilege. Um, of having you know pe people giving me first imp giving me pr first impression, um, and then I had to deal with a lot of bullshit at such early age, which is which is a good thing, you know, like because you can kind of see right through it, especially now because you know you've gotten used to it already. Um, you had to balance out between family, career, and school, you know, because uh, my parents are. Um, really strict about education and which you know understandably so and I think that's what um, needs to be done I think one day if I'm if I become a parent I'm probably gonna do the same thing <laughs> um, but yeah I mean it's it's um, dealing with a lot of bullshit at such an early age I think that's the most difficult struggle yeah I mean I know that um, a part of my life is public, but I always try to like hold on to it as much as <laughs> I can. Hold on to that private life um, as much as I can and as long as I can um, do. But um, I think by not, by not focusing on the social media and the followers, I think that's what makes you I don't know, you, you, you can still focus even though you're being watched, you know, 24-7, you're under the microscope, you know, you, you're constantly being judged, being labeled, um, especially coming from, you know, an Asian who was born and also grew up in Asia and then trying to make it here in the U.S. Um, the expectations, you know, became um, sometimes overwhelming, you know. Um, because what they think or what they expect from a woman or like an Asian woman, right? Like their, their standard of beauty is, is not quite the same with um, my own version of me, you know? So I think social media can get, can get you in, a, in such weird position that you, could, you can lose, li literally, you can lose yourself to that, you know, if, if you listen to any of that. So my focus has always been about, has always been about the art, about the music, and I truly realize that social media um, is only a vehicle, you know, a vehicle to my art, you know, and, and on my case, it's my music. I just focus on that. You know, one thing that I'm always proud about myself, proud of myself, is that I'm always me, you know? Um, me two years ago might be different from me now, absolutely different, but I'm always me. You know, I've always been me and I, I will always be me. So I never have, you know, that burden like, oh, I gotta be that person or that girl 10 years ago or like, oh, I gotta be that woman that they expect me to be or like fit in those those boxes that they, they created for me, you know, so because I'm, I'm, um, I'm secure about me, me as a person. I'm secure about me not being perfect. 
I'm secure about me being insecure sometimes. I'm secure of my vulnerability. So I never really, you know, um, got caught up with the whole like, oh, people expect me to be this or like, oh, people expect me to be more like this, more like that. Because, hey, I mean, it's their opinions, but at the, you know, at the end of the day, it's still my life and, and I know what I want. I know what's the best for me. Um, and most of those people who have those expectations or, you know, just, um, you know, label, put, putting labels on me or whatever, most of them don't even know me. You know what I mean? So I just got to filter out the unnecessary noises and trying to listen to me more. Okay, Ag, like, who do you want to become? Um, in five years, right? Like, or, or what version of Agnes Mo are you gonna be tomorrow? You know, and, and, and that's, um, that's, that's just been my focus. The same thing with my music. I always look at my music as a form of diary. So, you know, um, my first album probably talked about, I don't know, like breakups because I was going through that. You know, I don't know. Like, and then the, the second album probably talked about love, but it doesn't mean that that was not me. Like, it's just, it's just the process. It's just the journeys. It's the, you know what I mean? Like, it's my story. So, yeah, um, some people might have, like, different opinions on, like, oh, why do you do this with this, though? Like, why did you write it like this? Because that's what I was feeling at that time, you know? Um, it's not perfect, but it, at least it's, it's, you know, it's my truth. So let's get into this music. Yeah. Now, um, you have the single with Chris Brown, mm -hmm. Overdose, talk about that. We connected, um, so basically uh, we had been following each other on social media for about like two years, I think, two years before the project even came to live. And one day, um, we just thought, okay, let's just, you know, cut the bullshit out and like, let's just actually meet in person and play each other's music, right? So we did that. And, um, you know, long story short, um, he asked me to feature on um, one of his albums. At that time, it was the deluxe album. And um, we didn't stop there. We just, you know, kept going back to the studio, um, you know, vibing out. And I, think, and I think because of that honesty, you know, like because we just wanted to focus on the music, um, the authenticity of it all, like the honesty, um, of the music, like it, like you, you can hear it, you, you can feel it. Um, Cause when we, um, when we uh, recorded those songs and when we wrote those songs together, we didn't think of any business, any strategy. We didn't think of, oh, we need to release this, you know, so-and-so, oh, we need to make it more pop now. Oh, we need to make it more urban. Oh, we need to make it more, you know, rhythmic. There's nothing. It was just us, um, um, a few people like sound engineers and, and, and you know, some of, my, some of our friends as well. Um, and, and just the beats, you know, we were just, okay, cool, what, what are we doing now? You know, and we just, we would just play beats, beats after beats, and, and we would pick the one that we felt at that time. And that video is like a movie. Yeah. Like I was watching the video yeah. and it was, it was, I would say you felt the emotion mm -hmm. um, between the acting, the dancing, right. and everything. I definitely felt the emotion in that. Um, and the other music that you got mm -hmm. that we heard mm -hmm. is dope, to say the least. Mm -hmm. So what can we expect when it's album time? Yeah. You pick these songs? Yeah, so I'm the type of person who likes to just go in the studio without thinking, right? Without thinking of the politics, of the business, whether it's first quarter or second quarter, or third quarter. Like, I, I don't like playing catch up, right? So before I did this project with Chris, I had over 50, 60 songs already done for my solo project. Um, and then I did 10 to 12 songs with Chris already. So it's kind of like almost 100 songs that I've already done. Um, and yeah, and then so now it's just a matter of which song are we gonna pick for the next single. Um, we kind of already narrowed it down to about, you know, like top five, you know, our top five um, options. Um, 
but I really do want to release one solo single first and then maybe one or two solo singles and then release my solo project and also um, the project with Chris at the same time. I must end it right here. 2019 mm -hmm. is about 49, 48 days away. Mm -hmm. um, so for what it seems like, this is shaping up to be a very big year for you. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling super blessed right now. Like, I'm, I'm feeling a little under the weather right now, but I'm, feeling, I'm still feeling super <laughs> blessed. Um, the reason is because I, literally, I was born a thousand miles away from the U.S., right? Uh, I was just, you know, one of those girls that came from an island and, you know, uh, dreamt of just sharing um, what I got to the world, right? Um, and a lot of people were um, doubting me, of course, you know, and, and th at that time I was already big there. But even that, like, people still kind of like, what are you talking about? You're just an Indonesian, you're so arrogant to even say that you want to go international, which, um, um, which was a little disappointing, to be honest, because I feel like, yo, like, I'm one of your people, though. It's like, you're supposed to root for me, like, if I have uh, my dreams. But at the same time, um, I got, I was reminded by my, my mom, um, yo, like, you just got to focus on the people who, who cares about you. Like, why do you got to listen to all those noises who don't give a fuck about you? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I listened to my fans and, and you know, they're just super amazing. Um, they've been like rooting for me and since day one until now. Um, and to yesterday, we talked about it um, at dinner with 300, my label and also my management. Um, we talked about the chart, right? And they reminded me that I'm the first Indonesian artist who ever charted um, on a U.S. radio chart, um, so and it's like at both at urban and at rhythmic. The fact that my music um, speaks more than just my my skin tone and, and where I'm from, that is encouraging. You know, and and just to be here and just be myself, you know, I don't have to pretend to be someone else. Um, I'm this petite little, you know, Asian um, who got uh, a whole lot of swag. <laughs> but um, it just, it's really encouraging and I feel so blessed that my music can um, go way further than my skin color and um, where I'm from, so yeah.